September 11, 1973, they brought in Margaret Thatcher's best friend, Mr. Pinochet. And now we all know what type of man Pinochet was. But what did they think of that democracy? What did they think of democracy in Bolivia when they elected Morales? What did they think of democracy in Ecuador when they elected Carrera? A leader who turns around and says, you know what? If you have a US military base in Ecuador, I want a, a, a military base for my country in Miami. What happened? What's going on? What are they trying to do? What about Chavez in Venezuela? What about that democracy? What about Nkrumah in Ghana? What about that democracy? Even in Australia, Mr. Whitlam, what did they think of that democracy? Australia, which now has three US military bases within it. What did they think of this democracy? And what's this all about? It's all about words. It's all about redefining your own definitions, which you know as a human being, which are already in you as a human being. You already know the definitions, but they want to switch them over and flip them around and give them different words to make sense of your reality for you, rather than you being able to make sense of your own reality. And Mr. Obama, it has to be said, has been rewarded. He's been completely rewarded. Before he became the President of the United States, he made a speech in front of APAC where he said, I promise to give the Israelis $30 billion of aid over the next 10 years. Recently, much was made, much, much, much was made over the fact that he even suggested, slightly suggested, some type of return to 67 borders. But what did he really say? What did he really say? He said, mutually agreed land swaps. Is there anything mutual about an illegal settlement? Is there anything mutual about these settlements? And actually, that means that the 67 borders don't even exist. <laughs> because he said, mutually agreed land swaps. So basically, the settlements stay. But of course, a big deal to me now. Not remembering that, in fact, George Bush and Bill Clinton both said the same thing. They both said, yeah, let's take it back to 67 borders. What have the Israelis done now? Recently, a settlement in Jerusalem was named after Obama. An Israeli settlement in Jerusalem was named after Obama. He has been rewarded because he has funded this expansion. This expansion has been funded. That is the one thing that Israel did not survive without the support of the United States. There's only been one time, one time the United States have ever been against Israel, ever. And it's when the Israelis, the British, and the French attacked Egypt. When Jamal Abdel Nasser wanted to nationalize the Suez Canal, Eisenhower came in and said to the Israelis, the French and the British, no, no, leave him. The only time in history, in the 50s, what are we dealing with? We are dealing with such an organized lobby, such an organized mafia is at work. Not only, not only in the United States. Why do you think Nick Clegg, he didn't just U-turn on the issue of tuition fees? Before becoming the Deputy Prime Minister of this country, Nick Clegg said there should be an arms embargo on the State of Israel. However, when he became the Deputy Prime Minister, he stood before the Liberal Democrat Friends of Israel, the lobby group that it is, and said, I was wrong about Israel. I was wrong about Israel. The Conservative Friends of Israel have given a huge amount to the Conservative Party while they have been in opposition. And that buys things, it buys things. We have to organize and we have to be organized. Knowing is not enough anymore. We have to mobilize and actively lobby. And I met um, a few different members of European Parliament and one of them said to me, and I, he said to me, my career depends on me not mentioning Palestine. If I mention Palestine, I won't be a member. What is this? What is this powerful entity and force? This is what we have to question. And we have to question how we ourselves can mobilize in the right direction. 
And there is only one line of division between us as, hu as human beings. And it's not a line of division between Jewish and Muslim people, Jewish and Arab people. It is a line of division dividing those who believe in the equality of all and those who believe in the supremacy of some. And that is the side of the line we must always stand on. Thank you very much.